Hey guys, Joe here at JP Details with part 3 of the Porsche 911 restoration series. If you haven't watched the previous two episodes where we covered the washing and decontamination stages in part 1 and the compounding process in part 2, then be sure to check those videos out. This Porsche 911 Carrera 4S is in for one serious transformation. In today's episode, we're going to be refining the paintwork and addressing the smaller areas where machine polishing isn't possible and we're going to get the porker ready for ceramic coating. Quick lesson in compounding versus polishing. Compounding is the process where we use a cutting compound and a cutting pad to essentially machine polish the paintwork to remove paint swirls, blemishes, scratches, scuffs and bird etching to name but a few. This compounding process is designed to remove a certain amount of clear coat to essentially smooth it down a layer so we are then presented with a much better conditioned finish underneath. The polishing of the paintwork, also known as the refining stage, is where we use a fine finishing polish in the soft polishing pad to remove any imperfections that may have been caused through the compounding stage and to refine the paintwork back to a solid and deep gloss finish. When you compound paintwork, there is a good chance that you have left some degree of your own defects behind from the abrasives in the compound and also due to the nature of cutting pads being a certain level of abrasive. The passenger door on the 911 has been repainted and the finish is obviously slightly softer than the original factory paintwork. As you can see, whilst the compounding stage has removed the swirls and scratches, but due to this paint being a little softer than the rest of the bodywork, the machine polishing lines, which are essentially pretty bad holograms, are incredibly visible. In my experience of compounding most types of paintwork, then you will get this sort of effect, but perhaps not to this degree. Also, something that I haven't managed to capture on camera is the uniformed marring from the cutting abrasives. These are essentially uniformed or identical type of very light paint swirling covering the entire vehicle. These are hard to see and practically invisible to those without the eye for the details, but these types of defects obviously need to be refined out of the paintwork, which is where our finishing stage comes in. It goes without saying that there are lots of different types of paintwork, so with these videos I can only talk about the car in question, the demonstration vehicle. When compounding or polishing a vehicle of your own, it is down to you to decide which compounds are best suited to that vehicle's type of paintwork. Complete your test areas to help you determine which products and pads to use and with experience, it should become almost second nature. The compounding stage for the Carrera 4S was done with the Rupes Green Medium Compound and a FlexiPads 5 inch microfiber cutting disc or 5 to be exact. The refining process is going to be done using a white Rupes Ultra Soft Finishing Pad and the Rupes Yellow Fine Finishing Polish. Whilst compounding the paintwork on the Porsche and completing the first few sections of the refining process, in my opinion, the Porsche has smack bang in the middle of medium to hard paint hardness. What does this mean? Well it means that this is the reason why I chose those specific compounding and polishing combinations. The compounding stage was the best level of cut that I could give the vehicle whilst being able to refine the finish in one following polishing stage. The thing you tend to find with the refining stage is that you can spread the polish out much further in comparison to compounding. Compounds dry out far quicker whereas the polish remains runnier for far longer. One good way to maximise pad life and to avoid the pad from becoming oversaturated, if you are able to continue polishing the next section of paintwork without applying more polish, then go ahead and keep polishing. I picked this little tip up from Larry at Ammo NYC and have been using his technique on every detail ever since. I mean, why would you want to apply more product when you can clearly see that the surface is still being nicely polished? When the pad does finally require a few more dollops of product, you should notice straight away. The polish residue on the paint just doesn't look the same. It will become far drier and less consistent, very noticeable, I must admit. With one side of the bonnet fully refined but yet to be IPA'd, the comparison between compounded and refined is quite remarkable. The left hand side is looking far glossier, in fact it's certainly looking like a different shade of blue. Please note that those small streak looking things on the right are actually polished residue splatter, so please ignore. If there's one thing that I hate when I'm working is people looking around the car when it isn't even finished. 
The most common remarks I've heard are how are you getting on, much left, oh this happened a few months ago do you reckon you can take a look, Cindy down the road had a booking with such and such and he didn't even show up, we've got two cats, two dogs, three kids, we go on holiday in two weeks time to Jamaica so we don't have any time to clean the car. Was it bad? How's it looking? What time do you reckon you'll be finished? Do you want a coffee? Yeah, please. So typically with the refining stage, I'll go through three or four of each sized polishing pads. You don't want to burn these finishing pads out before moving to the next fresh one, but rather replace your pads when you need to, to ensure that those pads stay effective. A burnt out polishing pad becomes warped in shape and is no good for polishing to a professional standard. I'd much rather go through more pads on each vehicle and perhaps use let's say 50% of each pad's life before giving them a wash and then using the other 50% of its life on the next vehicle. If that made any sense then give the like button a tickle. With the bonnet sorted and don't worry you will get to see the finished results soon, let's talk about knowing when to stop with all things polishing and compounding. Compounding is easier to say because the compound residue does dry out far quicker due to it being a thicker substance, with polish due to it taking longer to dry out then you can keep the machine polisher going for quite some time. This does depend on how much polish you are applying to the pad but generally by doing the crosshatch pattern twice i.e. twice vertical and twice horizontal whilst maintaining a slow arm speed is going to give the polish enough time to work on the surface. Areas where a crosshatch pattern just isn't possible, then I quite simply just make sure that each area is covered with a slow enough arm speed and enough passes. This is one of the difficult things to try and explain and one that does become second nature with a bit of experience. There are such measuring devices that are capable of measuring the depth of the gloss level in automotive paintwork and I'm pretty sure that if you spent 10 minutes refining one particular area in comparison to spending 5 minutes, then the gloss readings from the 10 minutes would be higher. Like most detailing jobs you are limited to spending a certain amount of time on the vehicle which needs to be split up between all of the jobs that you need to get done, quite simply to stay profitable as a business. I will go over in the last episode of this series how long I spent on each major stage of the detail to give you a better idea. So how do you refine the paintwork to remove those compounding marks and to ensure that no holograms or any other nasties are left in the paintwork? It takes the right polish and pad combination for a start which needs to be capable of removing the self-induced defects and then produce a finish that is absolutely solid. It then takes enough polishing contact time to get those results with a few other key things to remember. Only apply enough polish to suit your working section, so the bigger the section then the more polish is required. Don't forget to brush your pads out frequently to keep them well maintained so that they perform consistently well. When polishing the paintwork itself, make sure you keep the polishing pad absolutely flat against the paintwork because if you do start to put down any uneven pressure then there is a good chance that holograms will be caused. Do not apply too much pressure to the machine and try and let the weight of the machine do the work. This is a bit different with the vertical panels however bringing the machine up to the paintwork and keeping that pad nice and flat against the paintwork is going to work wonders. Like we saw previously on, the compounding stage did leave a variety of defects in the paintwork due to a few repainted areas that did react slightly differently and also the pure fact that the paintwork was heavily swirled and scratched so I had to go at it rather vigorously. In order for me to refine the Porsche's paintwork back to 100% it did require a thorough machine polishing on speed setting 6 before giving the paintwork a final refinement slow pass on speed setting 4.5. This slower speed is going to allow for an even greater finishing process simply to ensure any holograms are completely removed. A technique I use on a lot of vehicles that undergo a minor paint correction detail and by doing this slower finishing pass straight after the main polishing work due to the polish residue still being on the paint is going to save you a bit of time with only buffing the residue off once and not twice. Even if I'm unsure about whether or not the vehicle truly needs this slower finishing speed, particularly with darker coloured metallics, I do tend to just go ahead and complete this extra stage as it only takes 5 extra minutes per panel and it will ensure that the finish is going to be amazing when it's all IPA wiped down. I've learned the hard way and so far by doing this process it has never let me down. Once again the bigger machine is utilised for as many areas that it will get to and with the nicely shaped and curved rear wings on the Porsche it was a simple case of manoeuvring the machine into a position where it will spin freely to fully refine all areas. 
Become the master of your machine polishing tool of choice and get some cars under your belt. Practice makes perfect and there is only so much you can learn on YouTube and on the training days. By all means, if you are interested in undertaking a day's training with myself, then be sure to check out jpdetails.co.uk and visit the training day page for further information. Larger types of areas completed with the Rupes Bigfoot LHR15, it's time to move to the smaller Mini Bigfoot. Using a 3 inch Rupes white finishing pad and the Rupes yellow fine finishing polish, I'm going to set about giving the tighter areas a thorough going over. Once again, it's all about spending the time with the machine to produce a show winning result. Just like the bigger machine, you will only want to use enough polish on the pad to suit each section and don't forget to brush your pads out frequently to keep them at optimum polishing potential. This little machine, in addition to the bigger Bigfoot, is incredibly handy for the smaller areas. The LHR15 is superb for the bigger panels where bigger coverage is required and for these tight and often curved and rounded areas, the mini Bigfoot works wonders. Rupes didn't make one machine to do one car, they made a range of machines for all of the different types of body panels in order to achieve perfection. The machines aren't cheap, but what they do offer you is one serious bit of kit for the relatively hefty price tag. Worth every penny though, because these machines do last a long time. The real inch criterias on the Porsche were polished by hand simply because none of the other machines would sufficiently polish them. I opted to use a handheld polishing applicator and the same Rupes yellow fine finishing polish and set about giving these areas a good going over. The objective is to get these areas nice and glossy and polished in return for them to be prepared ready to be ceramic coated. The Hybrid Nano has a metal spinning weight on the back of the machine right by the pad so I decided not to use this machine for safety reasons. I polished the vents thoroughly by hand with the polishing applicator to get them nice and glossy so they match the rest of the car.
finer details around the Carrera 4S badge were dealt with using the same polish and Meguiar's detailing swab. Once again I spent my time on these finer areas to make sure that they don't stand out when the whole vehicle is finished. Not only were the badges dealt with, but also the other panels and crevices using either a Meguiar's detailing swab or toothpicks. Quite a time consuming process, but regardless of how long it took, it'll be worth it in the end. I did miss a few rotar deposits on the exhaust tip so after I finished the bodywork I set about giving the tips the preparation that they deserve. Firstly the tar and glue remover was deployed to remove those last few but large rotar deposits. With some final decontamination prep sorted at last minute I reached for a microfiber applicator and the Meguiar's metal polish and set about giving the exhaust tips a good going over. There were a few areas that required a heavier abrasive setup so out came the wire wall. These areas were minimal, just a few traces of carbon deposits that were rather stubborn. If you do use something like wire wool on the exhaust tips then you will need to refine the finish afterwards with something a bit softer. Essentially the wire wool is the compounding stage and the soft microfiber applicator is the refining stage, kind of similar to the paintwork, but always try the softer variation first. So back to taping up and why do I do this for a second time? Well after the first load of compounding and polishing work those edges on the tape are prone to lifting and becoming a magnet for excess polish or compound residue. A good precautionary measure that I've got myself into after all of the machine polishing work is to put some fresh tape over any areas where either the product has built up on or the glue residue from the tape has become compromised. What you'll find by covering those problematic areas of tape is when you do finally give the exterior its final IPA wipe down is that you won't collect any clumps of product residue or glue residue in your microfiber towels. If this does happen then you could potentially mark the paintwork with the different types of residue. If those marks are not spotted and then you ceramic coat over the top of them this would not be a professional thing to do. With all final preparation work completed, including the machine polishing work, I'm going to give the paintwork a final IPA wipe down in preparation for the G-Technic ceramic coatings. G-Technic panel wipe is going to remove all of the polish oils and residue from the surface of the paint. After each section is wiped down, it does become apparent that there are no longer any polish oils or residue on the surface because the paintwork has become a fair bit rougher. For some vehicles they do lose a bit of shine at this point, but I didn't really notice that with this Porsche. 
The paintwork is now completely bare and almost ready for our last step protection product which for this lucky porker is going to be three layers of G-Technic's finest ceramic. After the final IPA wipe down you will want to conduct a vigorous paintwork inspection to ensure that the finish is at the level desired because at this stage is your last chance to sort any troublesome areas out before sealing them in for a long time, five years to be exact. I did find myself with a little more work to do on that passenger door, but after 10 minutes with the Rupes Bigfoot giving it a final refinement, I was on to a winner. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the following parts to this epic detailing series and please turn those notification bell icons on. Feel free to visit the Jape Details online store for products and merchandise, free air freshener going out with all orders. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram, just search JP Details, drop the video a like, and I'll hopefully catch you in the next one.